Kit Zero Survival here, and today I'm going to do a follow-up video to my Apaka Belt video. Link to that in the top right corner. So, if you're not familiar with that video, the basic rundown was I made a belt kit that can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it. Make sure to check out the video for the full info on that one. So what I'm doing today is just showing you some add-ons that you can put into a backpack. I decided to use the Camelback Blowfish as a backpack because it has a built-in water reservoir and it's very small and lightweight and can easily be worn with that kind of belt. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get started. We have a three season sleeping bag. This is not a winter sleeping bag. It's very small, very compact, but it's a good add-on for that. I have a couple of my outdoor vital pillows in here. That makes your sleep system a lot better, helps rejuvenate you because you've gotten a better night's sleep. I usually keep two in here, one for my head and one for my knees because I tend to fall asleep onto my side and then roll over onto my back. And it doubles as a city bug out bag so I put in my lock picks for fun. Make sure to follow all laws. This is a very important thing that I did not put in the belt pack because it was just too big and weighed too much. This is my battery charger. So it's got three solar panels. Now solar panels aren't going to charge your phone from zero to full in an hour or anything like that. It would take literally days and days and days to do that, especially with how strong smartphones are and how much battery power they consume. But it is also a battery bank as well as a solar charger. So you got this little USB port here. You just pull it out. There we go. And you can charge up to two devices at once. And then in the middle there is where you charge it up at home before you leave. And this is roughly four full charges of my cell phone. I haven't tried it with my newer model cell phone yet from zero to hundred, but it's not that much bigger of a battery than my previous cell phone. So I'm pretty sure I get at least three and a half to four out of it. And it's still roughly small enough to fit in your pocket. It's about the size of a thicker smartphone. It's about the same, you know, overall width and whatnot, but it's a bit thicker. So these are fun to add on to have to your pack because I like to be able to make sure my flashlights and my cell phone stay charged. And this also, charges like say my action cameras and things like that when I'm on overnighters and it powers everything I need with one battery pack. It's also got a light here if you need it so that solar panel pretty much means you have infinite flashlight. One of the most important add-ons is my Boreal 21 saw that is actually strapped to the outside of the Camelback backpack because it just simply will not fit. You've seen this saw reviewed in my video up here and this is a very important saw. I love this saw so much and Granted, you can do a lot with just a knife, and that's what that belt kit was designed around, having a knife be your main tool and pretty much your only tool. But a folding saw that's this good will make things even easier, and it's just a great backup to have, as well as an addition to have. So it can either be used in place of the knife for certain tasks or alongside the knife for certain tasks. I prefer saws over axes every day of the week so far. I've never met an axe that I like more than a saw. In here, I just have my little UCO mess kit spoon, fork, things like that. I might change it out for something else. I haven't quite decided yet. The reason why it's in a plastic bag is just simply to keep it clean so it doesn't get dirty while it's rolling around in my pack. I like to be hygienic when I eat, so I keep my hands clean, keep my utensils clean, things like that. Another baggie entry is my simple two-way radio. It would go to anybody else in my party, and I would just simply give them one of the other radios that this pairs with. Simple shortwave walkie-talkie, or short length walkie-talkie, I'm not sure proper type of walkie-talkie it is, but basically it's a two-way radio. Keep it in here to, for extra water resistance. It's pretty good in the rain, but since it would be an important communication backup for if my phone is not working, I'd like to make sure it's dry and charged and ready to go. My other piece of electronics is the charging cables for the things I use the most. So I have my Olight charger for my Payroon Mini that you've seen a video on. Link here. And it's also got like a cell phone charger and a micro USB adapter as well. I got the, not an adapter, but a wire. So that way I can charge up my radios, I can charge up my phone, anything else I need with just what's in this little pouch. Very good when filming outdoors. You've seen this mentioned before. It's a cool towel, it's amazing in the summer. It just helps keep you cool and keeps moisture on you. So you can have evaporative cooling and it really helps when it's like 80, 90, 100 degrees out. Super recommend these. This is something I'm experimenting with, is keeping an emergency pile of kindling that's already dry. I batoned it out myself, and it's just a little sack that way if it is heavy rain and I just can't seem to get a fire going, I know I have at least one bundle of small kindling that'll help me get a fire started, even in really, really, really hard scenarios. 
Now, remember, Tinder does not replace Kindling, and Kindling does not replace Tinder. You need them both. So you use your ProCamp Textile Tinder, get it ignited, put the Kindling on to make the flame grow, and then you can spread it to like your fire logs and things like that that you want for the main part of the fire that take a long time to burn. So I might take this out just for more room and less weight, but it is comforting to know that I have something like that. Now I have been able to get things like birch bark going for quite a significant amount of time, even when they're wet, in the rain, and have been soaked for a long time. And the same thing with the Pro Camp Tech Tender, but you can't take fire too lightly. Having extras is really important for things like that. Next up, my favorite dried food so far is just those adventure, sorry, mountain house adventure meals. And it's just beef stroganoff noodles, my favorite flavor. I like to keep at least one in there. That way I have food for a couple of days if I can serve it. And I don't have to worry about hunting, fishing, trapping, or anything like that right away. It's nice to just have a pre-made meal ready to go. This is an extra shelter piece that I can put in here. It's basically just a couple space blankets with some duct tape and things like that in there. As well as this kind of emergency shelter I actually got from AAA long time ago, long, long time ago, had nothing to do with this channel. But yeah, this way I can set up an impromptu shelter that will last me a few days in just a matter of minutes instead of having to, you know, worry about procuring branches and logs to build a primitive shelter and tarps and so on and so forth. Having these extra in addition to what's in the pocket belt make it where I can have a much better shelter a lot quicker because this little triangle shape is good and then I have two blankets I could tape to each side and then I have a fully enclosed shelter when I need. Just obviously you need to make sure you leave room for oxygen and things like that. But you get the general idea, this will help get things started a lot quicker. Another good thing you can have in a kit is a map of your local surroundings, whether it's where you plan on bugging out or just your immediate surroundings where you live. So you can navigate things a lot easier if you absolutely need to. Say your phone's GPS isn't working. I rely on that a lot and you know, for finding my way around town because I don't go into town very often but having a simple little map is definitely going to help you. Now we just have more technically shelter options because these are clothing that we can fit into the belt. So here we've got like a gator to keep me warm, uh, winter gloves that are water resistant with hand warmer slots in them. Obviously these are in the bag to stay dry. You know, during winter time, especially in my area, if you don't have mittens, you're going to lose your fingers to frostbite. It's just too cold to not have hand protection. So when I made that pocket belt video, I did mention that you would have to have weather appropriate clothing. So that's why I kind of like having this bag comboed with it because then you can go ahead and fit that clothing in the bag. And when it's summertime, use the summer stuff. When it's wintertime, use the winter stuff and still have it with you. Another article clothing that I want to keep in the bag so it's ready whenever I need it is a poncho because you definitely don't want it to be wet in the rain. And this is big enough to cover me and my backpack with no issues. And since that Camelback has uh, water reservoir in it. I go ahead. I can just keep going a long time regardless of the weather. It gets too cold, put on my mittens and other stuff. I'll have already brought a jacket with me because I would have been wearing weather appropriate clothing. Start strain, grab this out, pop it on. I don't have to stop. I've got water to keep me hydrated and keep going for, I could literally go without even unpacking the pack, just hiking for a few days. I could even cold soak this if I really wanted to and it'd be kind of gross because it tastes better hot. Uh, at least I'd imagine I never tried cold soaking one of these, but for hot meals and I could then I have food and water and shelter for a few days if I was absolutely having to leave on foot and go miles and miles and miles you know 10 miles a day or something like that I could still do it just with this backpack and that belt and only have to stop to refill the water when I needed to and then second to last just a pair of sunglasses for obvious reasons you sun out of your eyes but I tend to be unfortunate and get debris stuck in my eyes and I don't like that so I added sunglasses to it. I might start putting these in my EDC. I haven't decided yet because sunglasses are bulky and they break very easily when it's in an EDC kit. So I'm not 100% sure I actually want to do that yet. And I don't use them super often, but it is nice. That way you don't have to worry about things getting in your eye, any dust, any tree bark or pollen or what have you. And it also just simply makes your hike a lot easier. And then you would have seen this guy in various videos, I've worn it for over a year now, maybe like two years or something like that. And it's got my Olight patch, so my Payroom Mini can just clip right onto that and be used as a headlamp. And this is nice for not only helping keep your head a little bit warmer, but to keep rain off you when you got your poncho on, it helps hold the hood in place so it doesn't you know, slide down over your eyes. It, a hat is just super important to have 
and honestly very convenient. So I wouldn't necessarily say technically important. It's just extremely useful and it's so lightweight. Most people have a hat in some way, shape or form in their kit. And it just really, really is nice in the rain, in the sun, keeps so you can see better, comfortable with your sunglasses. It also doubles as a headlamp slot. So a hat like this is a very useful, very compact setup here. So that's it for this kit. It is an add-on to the Apocalypse belt, which can and does function as a self-contained kit. But this add-on lets you carry stuff a little bit more easily, like the hat and the glasses when you don't need them, or the mittens and things like that, and gets it closer to an all-season bag. The only real thing is if you have a really harsh winter, you have to make some adjustments to keep up with that a little bit better. But this gives you a dang good chance to get through it, and you have various ways of making shelter, and so on and so forth. Now you might be thinking, hey, there's no matches, no light or anything like that. That's because, like I said, this is an add-on to the Apocalypse belt, so I didn't want to be too redundant on certain things. Just add in certain tools like the saw to make it a little easier, the sleeping bag to make the shelter more comfortable, and to just, you know, have a little bit of food and water ready to go. But the bulk of the important stuff would be in the actual Apocalypse belt. So until next time, keep moving. Hi, Kit Zero here. Hope you loved that video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed by hitting this button here and then hitting the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. You can also check out these videos here for recommendations and to see what else I'm up to. And as always, comment below with what you like about this video and what you'd like to see on the channel. And until next time, keep moving.